Hey everyone, so this is the second part of a two-part video. Um, if you missed last week's Fit Friday, I talk all about running and um, my gear that I use and stuff, like I talk about all this stuff here, <laughs> what I use. This one is really going to be addressing specific questions that you guys had and that you posted on my Facebook page and on Instagram. I think the number one question that I had recurring in both on Facebook and Instagram was about breathing techniques and if I you know, do a certain breathing technique to run faster or to run longer. Now, I know there are some techniques. I know a lot of people say that you should um, just breathe through your nose. Um, so don't breathe through your mouth, just breathe through your nose while you're running. Um, another technique is to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. So you can, you can try that. I have tried that. Now this is just a personal thing. I have tried that and I just feel for me, like I feel like I'm suffocating. Um, I feel like I don't get enough oxygen. I feel like I can't run like that because I'm concentrating so hard on my breathing that I don't really do a good, very good job running. You should just figure out what works for you, but you can try those breathing techniques that I mentioned. Um, maybe that works for you. It didn't, it didn't work for me. Okay, I had a question here from Davinia Indy and she says, basically, I would like to know how to get started to control the pace, how to breathe, because sometimes I feel like if my lungs were frozen and I can't continue, how to improve on distance, trainers, all that jazz. So I think I already like talked a little bit about, about that in my first video about doing the walking and running intervals to kind of build up your stamina. What I found personally is that the first, like the first little bit when I start running is always the hardest because my muscles are cold and my, I'm just not into it in that first moment. And i really have to like drag myself to run that first kilometer. I'm just like, Oh my God, this is, this is insane. Like, what am I doing? You know, I noticed through the running app that actually the first, the usually the first kilometer I run like the slowest. And then I actually start to get faster and faster. You start to improve the more you do it. So you can't expect like the first few times that you do it, that your pace will be awesome. And you, you won't have any issues. Um, it's, you know, you just, you get better with time and just don't, you know, just don't give up. So I have another question here by N Nanda Gabriella and she asks, my knees always hurt when I start running with more intensity. Any tips for avoiding this? Um, so I have a couple tips. First of all, shoes. Um, think about what kind of shoes you're uh, wearing. If maybe you're not wearing the optimal shoes, maybe you're not wearing the shoes the right shoes for the terrain that you're running on. If you're running on pavement, you might need something that's more cushioning, but if you're having like joint pain, um, more cushioning shoes, like shoes that have more of a cushioning effect can really help. Also don't up your mileage or your speed too fast. I did that once, like once I was running like 5K consistently, and then one time I like really kind of strained or stretched myself and I was like, okay, I'm really gonna challenge myself. And I ran 8K like the next time and my knees were like on fire the next day. They were so painful um, just because it was such a big change in distance in a very short amount of time. So um, increase your distance gradually. And the other thing you can do is after a long run and if you kind of pushed yourself is to put, use ice. So get some ice packs, put those on your knees. Um, this is also good if you get shin splints. Uh, you can put that on your shins because putting on ice really um, works really good against inflammation. The other thing is that if you are going to be doing running consistently, you should combine it with strength training. And I know a lot of people don't even think about that, but um, you really need to combine both. You need to do strength training and running because strength training helps to um, strengthen your muscles around the joints, which can reduce some of the pressure on the joints. So the stronger your muscles are, the less amount of strain and stress will be put on the actual joints and the, like the bones and stuff, because you're going to have your muscles helping you out. Like I don't just go running. I go to the running and I do weight lifting at the gym and I focus really on my legs and also on the bands like here on the lower part. So really think about maybe going to a gym, um, or you can do strength training at home. Okay, so I got a question from Sophie Durand and she wanted to know what's the best pre-run meal or the post-run meal. I personally don't really like to eat a big meal or just, I don't really like to eat anything actually before I go run. I mean, sometimes if I have like a growling stomach, then maybe I'll eat like a banana or an apple. 
uh, or something like that. But generally, I tend to not really eat anything before I run. I just feel better when I don't have a, like a, a full stomach or anything in my stomach. Bananas are really good because they give you fast energy. Um, also, maybe like a rice cracker with some peanut butter on it or something for some energy. Rice cracker, a little bit of peanut butter or almond butter is awesome. Almond butter and then some apples or something on top. Like that would be a great pre run snack. For post run, what I like to do is I definitely need to eat after a run. Usually after I run, I'm like super hungry um, because depending on how long you go, you burn a ton of calories. So I like to actually kind of time my run around a meal. So the best way to do it is to either go before breakfast, before lunch or before dinner. Um, so then when you get home and you're hungry, you have like really a meal to look forward to. Megan Dugan and she writes, are you afraid of running alone, especially in the woods? So the short answer is no, I'm not afraid. <laughs> And the long answer is, um, it really depends, I guess, where you live. Now, I live in a country that is extremely safe. Um, you know, criminality rate in Switzerland is extremely low. Now, I know that safety sh is definitely an issue for women, um, well, for anybody, but for women especially. Now, if you live, you know, in a country with, or in a city or something with high criminality rate, then definitely don't go running by yourself. You know, maybe go with a running buddy, go running with a German shepherd dog. <laughs> No, but seriously, like a big dog um, is a big help if you have a dog or just go running along a place where there's lots of people. You know, if you do live in a country that isn't dangerous, I think a lot of people just feel unsafe because of like horror movies and stuff. And I mean, most crime like rape and stuff doesn't happen from a crazy lurking dude in a forest. You know what I mean? Like most rape happens from somebody, you know. Um, sadly, you know, think about if your if your fear is really justified. Um, now I'm not telling people to go out and do unsafe things, but you know, if you live in an area that's known for being very safe, then don't feel afraid to go out by yourself. I mean, I definitely don't. Now you can also look for running groups, like on the internet, there's always running groups that are going, you know, getting some pepper spray or something. I don't know if that's an option to some people. So I got another question here by Margarita Dorsey and she writes boobs and post baby belly bounce too much. So I think what she's asking is, what do you do if you have big boobs or post baby belly? And it's like bouncing around too much. So, well, I talked about boobs, <laughs> like sports bras in my last video, my last Fit Friday, post baby belly bounce. So generally, if you have just like a big stomach or whatever, um, I would look for definitely like high waisted running pants that go up a little bit higher. They kind of go almost up to your belly button. Um, and that will really suck you in, in that area. It'll keep everything like tight. And um, you can also look at uh, getting compression pants and compression pants are just made of even, even tighter weave. So they suck in a little bit even more. So I'm gonna take one last question and this one is from Abby Micah and she writes, is power walking just as good as running and better for the joints? Power walking or like speed walking, Nordic walking, something like that. Well, it's definitely less impact on the joints. So if you have, you know, if you have issues with your joints or something, or you, you just don't have the, like haven't built up the resistance to it, I guess, um, then yeah, I mean, try it. No, you won't burn as many calories, I think, as when you're actually running because running is more physically intense than walking. But if you're, you know, like out of shape, I mean, why not start with that? Or why not just, you know, try that and see how you like it. You know, power walking is a great way to, to get into running. Um, it's a great way to get exercise and it's also a form of cardio. And what you can also do is do a power walk uphill and you will seriously start sweating because going uphill is going to make the resistance harder. I hope these two videos about running were helpful to you and I totally encourage you guys to try it. Um, you know, maybe start with power walking. Like I said, do running and walking intervals, find a nice spot that you enjoy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Check out the other one. If you missed it, there's lots more information in there and I will see you guys in the next fit Friday. Subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up and I will see you soon. Bye everyone.